Biological Organization, Wikipedia Article Audio Biological organization is the hierarchy of complex biological structures and systems that define life using a reductionistic approach. The traditional hierarchy, as detailed below, extends from atoms to biospheres. The higher levels of this scheme are often referred to as an ecological organization concept, or as the field, hierarchical ecology. Each level in the hierarchy represents an increase in organizational complexity, with each object being primarily composed of the previous level's basic unit. The basic principle behind the organization is the concept of emergence the properties and functions found at a hierarchical level are not present and irrelevant at the lower levels. Levels Fundamentals the biological organization of life is a fundamental premise for numerous areas of scientific research, particularly in the medical sciences. Without this necessary degree of organization, it would be much more difficult and likely impossible to apply the study of the effects of various physical and chemical phenomena to diseases and physiology. For example, Fields such as cognitive and behavioral neuroscience could not exist if the brain was not composed of specific types of cells, and the basic concepts of pharmacology could not exist if it was not known that a change at the cellular level can affect an entire organism. These applications extend into the ecological levels as well. For example, DDTS direct incisitidal effect occurs at the subcellular level, but affects higher levels up to and including multiple ecosystems. Theoretically, a change in one atom could change the entire biosphere. The simple standard biological organization scheme, from the lowest level to the highest level, is as follows. More complex schemes incorporate many more levels. For example, a molecule can be viewed as a grouping of elements, and an atom can be further divided into subatomic particles. Each level can also be broken down into its own hierarchy, and specific types of these biological objects can have their own hierarchical scheme. For example, Genomes can be further subdivided into a hierarchy of genes. Each level in the hierarchy can be described by its lower levels. For example, the organism may be described at any of its component levels, including the atomic, molecular, cellular, histological, organ and organ system levels. Furthermore, at every level of the hierarchy, new functions necessary for the control of life appear. These new roles are not functions that the lower level components are capable of and are thus referred to as emergent properties. Every organism is organized, though not necessarily to the same degree. An organism cannot be organized at the histological level if it is not composed of tissues in the first place. Empirically. A large proportion of the biological systems we observe in nature exhibit hierarchic structure. On theoretical grounds we could expect complex systems to be hierarchies in a world in which complexity had to evolve from simplicity. System hierarchies analysis performed in the 1950s, laid the empirical foundations for a field that would be, from 1980s, hierarchical ecology. The theoretical foundations are summarized by thermodynamics. When biological systems are modeled as physical systems, in its most general abstraction, they are thermodynamic open systems that exhibit self-organized behavior, and the set-slash-subset relations between dissipative structures can be characterized in an hierarchy. Notes a simpler and more direct way to explain the fundamentals of the hierarchical organization of life, was introduced in ecology by Odom and others as the Simon S. Hierarchical Principle, 
Simon emphasized that hierarchy emerges almost inevitably through a wide variety of evolutionary processes, for the simple reason that hierarchical structures are stable. To motivate this deep idea, he offered his parable about imaginary watchmakers. There once were two watchmakers, named Hora and Tempus, who made very fine watches. The phones in their workshops rang frequently, new customers were constantly calling them. However, Hora prospered while Tempus became poorer and poorer. In the end, Tempus lost his shop. What was the reason behind this? The watches consisted of about 1,000 parts each. The watches that Tempus made were designed such that, when he had to put down a partly assembled watch, it immediately fell into pieces and had to be reassembled from the basic elements. Hora had designed his watches so that he could put together sub-assemblies of about ten components each. Ten of these sub-assemblies could be put together to make a larger sub-assembly. Finally, ten of the larger sub-assemblies constituted the whole watch. Each sub-assembly could be put down without falling apart. 